The president is expected to arrive in the nation's capital, Abuja, in the early hours of tomorrow after he departed New York this evening, where he attended the 73rd United Nations General Assembly. While in New York, the president delivered what was described as Nigeria's national statement at the UN General Assembly, calling on the global body to step up efforts towards tackling the many challenges confronting the world. Our correspondent, Ibrahim Adra, tells us more. That's the president departing the Millennium Hotel in Manhattan, New York City, en route to the JFK airport. By the time you're watching this report, the Air Force One, the president's aircraft, would be mid-air or even have touched down in Abuja. But it's been a busy week for the president and the Nigerian delegation, both at the UNGA and on the fringes. Madam President. From the general debates to meetings on tuberculosis, nuclear arsenals, and fight against corruption. There were private meetings with some world leaders, one of whom is the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. There were also interactions with the business community. As you must be aware, he is very keen to ensure that the power sector is reinvigorated and um, um, it needs to be done by a combination of generation being increased, transmission being increased, and also distribution. Ministers, ambassadors. At an event put together by New Partnership for Africa Development, Nepat, Nigeria, President Buhari speaks on how corruption underdeveloped Africa and those behind it. He said, and objectionable, that our continent still battles with grand corruption at the highest level leading to resource migration through opaque systems in many recipient countries and the outright willingness of some advanced countries to harbor stolen funds from Africa. These detestable practices are being perpetrated by some international collaborators it was an event to assess progress of the country in the fight against corruption and provision of infrastructure. <laughs> President Buhari also received special honors while in New York from those from Nigerians in diaspora and two more from the state of New Jersey and city of Philadelphia. Between now and the next UN General Assembly, there is a lot of work to be done by leaders of the various countries to back up their speeches if the objectives and the spirit of this year's theme are to be met. From Manhattan in New York City, Ibrahim Adra reporting for Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the presidency has commended the outcome of the All Progressives Congress presidential primary conducted across the country on Friday, where President Muhammad Buhari emerged as the sole aspirant. A statement by the president's spokesperson, Mr. Gaube Shehu, says the American-style direct presidential primaries adopted by the party is a major boost to the president's chances ahead of next year's general election. It adds that the huge turnout of registered party members at all voting centers prove that the president has the unrivaled ability to reach out to the people and mobilize votes. He explains, and I quote, it is significant that President Buhari has won a major victory, fair and square, through direct nationwide primary, a system that seeks to break the mold. The president has shown that you don't have to be a party owner or go through a difficult inner party consensus to emerge as candidate. End of quote. The APC adopted the direct presidential primary to elect its candidate ahead of the 2019 general elections. And let's move to Kano State, where the returning officer for the APC presidential primary election, Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, has announced that President Muhammadu Buhari scored over 2 million votes to win the primaries in the state. Governor Ganduje made this disclosure at the party secretariat in Kano, saying that the primary election, which was conducted across the 44 local government areas in all the 484 wards of the state, was confirmed as peaceful and orderly. We all had the individual results in favor of Muhammad Buhari. And 
the total votes in favor of Muhammad Buhari stands at two million nine hundred and thirty one thousand two hundred and thirty five votes in favor of Muhammad Buhari. And as the campaigns for the 2019 general elections heat up, the political scene in Lagos is also becoming more intriguing. One of the governorship aspirants under the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Femi Hamzat, has stepped down for his colleague, Mr. Jide Songolu, to carry the party's governorship flag. While making his decision known in Lagos, Mr. Hamzat said the choice of direct primary to select the governorship candidate in Lagos is a right step in the right direction. Our great party, the All Progressive Congress, and our dear state of Lagos, we are on the cusp of history, actually, in the sense that the generality of our party men and women, we are being given the opportunity in choosing who carries the party's flag in Lagos State in the general election that will be coming up in March of this year through the instrumentality of direct primaries. For it's a process that truly deserves and restores ownership to all members of our party, irrespective of class, creed, or gender. You will recall that I had signified my intention to run for the governorship of Lagos State on the platform of APC. We are conscious of the fact that real progress is defined by balancing growth and development. We were aware that we must always seek to mobilize the generality of our party members behind a common purpose to deliver the APC manifesto. It is on that note that I wish to inform you gentlemen of the press and distinguished ladies and gentlemen that after due consultations with numerous supporters and the difference to the wise counsel of those I consider political mentors and fathers and mothers, by the way, I've resolved to step down from the governorship race in Lagos on the platform of our party and instead pull resources together with my brother and friend, Mr. Abatunde, Babajide Olushola Sonwolu. Staying with Lagos politics, 36 members of the Lagos State House of Assembly have also endorsed Mr. Sonwolu. The lawmakers took the decision during a meeting in Lagos today saying they were in agreement with the party leadership and the governor's advisory council on the choice of Mr. Songwolu. But four of the 40-member House of Assembly lawmakers did not sign the endorsement. In the meantime, the national leadership of the APC has postponed the date of the party's primaries in Lagos and Imo State to Monday, October the 1st. The party gives inadequate logistics as reasons for the change of date. The national chairman of the party, Mr. Adam Soshomole, said this in Abuja on Saturday while inaugurating the 21-member National Convention Committee led by the Oyo State Governor, Abiola Ajimobi. To other stories now, the European Union, the United Kingdom and the United States have again raised concerns over the conduct of security agents and party supporters ahead of the 2019 general elections. A joint statement by the EU, UK and the United States commended the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for the conduct of the Ocean State Governorship election, but notes that a lot of irregularities occurred during the supplementary poll held on Thursday, September the 27th. They state that their delegations witnessed a lot of interference, intimidation of voters, journalists and civil society observers by some political party supporters and security operatives. In their words, and I quote, it is clear that the neutrality of the security services and responsible conduct by party agents, both inside and outside polling units, will be essential to ensure free, fair, credible and peaceful elections in 2019, end of quote. They also restate their neutrality amongst all parties and candidates, as well as commitment to supporting Nigerians ensure credible polls. From politics to security matters now, the Nigerian army troops have retrieved the car belonging to the missing retired Major General Idris Al-Khali from a pond in Duraduru community in just south local government area of Plateau State. But the whereabouts of the retired military officer is still not yet known. His personal belongings, which include his pair of shoes, a shirt with his initials, as well as an umbrella, were recovered from the vehicle. 
The troops tracked the car to the pond following preliminary investigations that it was seen there. The soldiers, however, began draining the pond despite little restriction from the villagers. Efforts are still on to find the army chief. Parents of the abducted Dapchi schoolgirl, Leah Sharibu, want government to resume negotiations with Boko Haram terrorists for the release of their daughter. The mother of the missing girl is really worried about the threat by Leah's captors that the girl may be killed by October the 1st. Her mother, Rebecca, during an interactive session with journalists, explains that it has been seven months since the girl was abducted alongside other students of the Government Girls Science Technical College, Dapchi, in Yobe State by members of the Boko Haram sect. While most of her colleagues were rescued by government forces, Leah was unfortunate because she refused to deny her Christian faith. Her plea is being interpreted by one of the journalists. She appreciated the entire world for praying for her and her family. And she said she is here on behalf of her family, she and her husband especially, to plead with the entire world, most especially the federal government. And she pleaded with the president, the vice president, the secretary to the federal government, that they should please do whatever they can to ensure that Leah is being released. And it is also uh, a cry that a threat has been sent out that effect from October, Leah will be the next in line to be killed. And that was made, what made her to break down, to really plead with the federal government that whatever they will do to ensure that Leah is released before that time, they should please go ahead and do. And we have seen how emotionally she became because it is so difficult even for me to Remember that just on Monday, it will be 1st October. So it is her sincere desire that anybody that can do anything to ensure that she is out should do it. She also, wanted, she also said she thanks the entire world, and then most especially Nigerians, for standing in with the family and for pushing and pressuring every angle to ensure that Leah is being released. So she wants to appreciate everybody. But she, most especially, she thanks the entire world for praying, because prayer is the most important thing.